Iceland is often referred to by photographers as the land of contrast. You can drive 20 minutes down the road, and not only does the landscape completely change, but so does the weather. So this is partly why I keep coming back to Iceland, because I can capture something entirely unique with every trip. Two things that I've never had the chance to photograph in Iceland are the northern lights and ice caves. So these two things are very high on my wish list for this epic Icelandic adventure. Following the entire coastline of Iceland is a highway called the Ring Road. And so we headed east from Reykjavik, and our first stop uh, was a place called Seljalandsfoss. Uh, it's a spectacular waterfall that you can actually access from the backside. Uh, we wanted to get in behind and take some photographs. Every time I try to get a shot, the mist, the wind, everything just gets all over the lens. I can't get anything, so I'm going to go down, set up the drone, try to get some aerials instead. So we brought that out. We were a little concerned about the wind, you know, it was quite uh, gusty, but uh, we took the chance, sent it up anyway, and it definitely offered us a very unique perspective, something that uh, we hadn't uh, anticipated to get. So we've just arrived at Skogafoss Waterfall. Uh, I'd love to get a unique angle of this. So we're gonna take the drone out, send it up, get some low altitude aerials. The best place to take off from was actually at the top. Uh, so we had to hike over 200 feet with this heavy drone. I was working on about two hours of sleep. So it was definitely a haul. Uh, we found a little flat spot that we could take the drone off from. And we captured what, what I think is just some stunning footage of this incredible uh, waterfall, the birds flying around and the mist coming up. It, it, it really looked quite spectacular. Uh, unfortunately, the challenge then was landing. We had this narrow little spit of land with cliffs on either side. So we had to bring it in, line it up, and then cut the power quite hard so that it would sink into the mud and stay there and not fall off either side. So it was, uh, it was a bit of an exciting landing. In 1973, a U.S. Navy DC-3 aircraft uh, crash-landed on a beach near the town of Vik. Um, we'd heard rumors about the wreckage and we were sort of given a rough coordinate for where we might find it. Uh, we spent hours looking everywhere for this thing, just driving around this endless, beautiful, monochromatic landscape. Uh, just black sand for as far as you can see. Uh, we're losing our light quickly, so uh, we're in a bit of a rush to get there. We were close to giving up our search, but uh, just at the last second I actually saw this little tiny gray speck off in the distance. Oh, there it is, there it is, there it is. Talk about an incredible subject to be able to photograph. So we have arrived at the plane and it's absolutely spectacular conditions. We've got a sunset going on right now with this amazing color in the sky. To be able to see this wreckage in the midst of this moon-like environment was uh, absolutely amazing. Um, one of the challenges with, with shooting there was that uh, the bottom half of the frame was all black and of course the top half of the sky was all white. I've thrown a ND6 uh, grad filter onto my lens and that's allowed me to darken down the sky and get all that color out of it. Check this out, this is raw, straight out of the camera. I have to say we were treated to a pretty spectacular sunset, amazing color, so I was really happy with the shots of those. As the sun was setting, uh, the crew and I decided to get a little creative. In Iceland right now, we're dealing with about five hours of daylight, so we're trying to come up with some creative ideas, things we can do in the dark. So with this plane, we're gonna take some steel wool and some sparklers, we're gonna light them up and create some cool effects. So we parked our vehicle in behind the plane, 
uh, turn the high beams on and we got this nice beam of light coming through one of the windows of the aircraft. Uh, somebody stood at the nose with an LED and lit that up and then we had somebody in the fuselage with a cage, a metal cage full of steel wool and he spun it uh, while it was lit on fire and it threw all these sparks out of the back of the plane. Uh, and then all of a sudden uh, the clouds started to break up and we got this unbelievable display of the northern lights. We had all these kind of weird quirky elements that came together to make the photo and uh, we have no idea what the photo actually means uh, but we definitely had uh, fun making it and, and it looks kind of cool. We finally left the wreckage uh, late into the night and made our way east. Uh, and when we arrived at the Yokel Sarlon Lagoon, in just this moment of sheer serendipity, we had this incredible display of northern lights over top of the lagoon. So we got out, photographed those, and uh, you know, to this day, I, I still can't even believe how good Mother Nature was to us that night. The next morning we met up with a local guide by the name of Einar and he wanted to take us to this uh, ice cave that he'd recently discovered and thankfully we had this giant vehicle that we were going in and uh, I have to admit it was it was pretty fun to drive. <laughs> Love it! As we were driving along the rocky terrain of this receding glacier, uh, it just kept getting worse and worse until the point where we, we couldn't drive any further. So we got out of the vehicles and Einar starts putting on hip waders, uh, a life jacket and a helmet. So of course I'm wondering, you know, what he's getting us into. But uh, he's a very accomplished guide and he's been doing it for over 30 years. So I felt very comfortable going in with him. I'm afraid that people are starting to underestimate the danger of ice caves because there are so many, many people coming to ice caves now. Well, with my helmet, we should be safe. Yes, but in that case, when it's <laughs> 10 tons yes. that fall, helmet is not going to make a dif big difference in that case, you know. Okay, well, I'll go first <laughs> and you can follow. We were hiking at the base of the Vatnayoko Glacier, uh, which is Iceland's largest glacier. Uh, it's about a thousand years old. Due to global warming, unfortunately, it's receding about 100 meters per year. There is, there is a crack here. Let's not stand on this. Yes, okay. When we arrived at the opening, uh, we discovered that Einar had set up this old rickety ladder that was about 30 feet long down into the glacier. Uh, so we descended down there and it was like entering another world. I know, this is absolutely spectacular. Yeah, welcome to Iceland. <laughs> <laughs> I can see why you love coming down here. Yeah, I just love the blue color of ice cream like this. It's, it doesn't get any nicer than this, I, I would say. Phenomenal. Everywhere you turned uh, was just, it was another shot opportunity. I have to say, this has got to be one of the most spectacular things I've ever seen. This ice cave is absolutely gorgeous. The deep blues and the light coming through like crystals. Uh, I just, I can't wait to start shooting. You could shoot wide and sort of capture a sense of place, uh, or you could go in really nice and close and just capture this beautiful array of abstract patterns in the ice. I was finding that capturing a sense of scale in these ice caverns was really difficult. Uh, so thankfully, INR with his yellow jacket complemented against the blue uh, was willing to be a model for me. The river rushing underneath this glacial ice was, it was exciting and it was powerful. Uh, the roar of the water tunneling its way through this, uh, through the ice, it, it just, it, it was an incredible experience and it was really quite visually stunning. The water had polished the edges of this cavern and it just, it made for phenomenal photographs. Uh, and you know, I could have spent hours under there uh, shooting, but uh, unfortunately the daylight was falling quickly and uh, we had to get our way out before we were in the dark. One of the main reasons I'd come to Iceland was to photograph ice caves. So one day in an ice cave just didn't feel like enough. I, I felt like I could have spent years exploring these things. So the next morning I was absolutely desperate to get back into another one. Uh, so we made the decision to go and look for our own ice cave uh, because Einar wasn't available to join us. 
Uh, it's definitely not something that's recommended to do because there is a very real possibility of an ice cave collapsing, but uh, we went in search of one anyway. Yesterday we heard a rumor about another ice cave in a different glacier. Uh, I don't know exactly where it is, but we're gonna go and see if we can find it. Uh, I think we're close. Eventually we ran out of road. Uh, even our giant SUV couldn't get any further. So we got out and, and we hiked for several hours along the edge of this uh, of the glacier, uh, just looking for any signs of an opening. Um, but I kept getting distracted by these massive columns of ice that had broken off of the glacier, That just a stunning photographic subject. Uh, so I, you know, I was really taking my time to, to photograph these. We were actually just about ready to give up our search. But uh, lo and behold, just 100 feet over, uh, was this very narrow entrance to the base of the glacier. We went inside and, and it opened up into this absolutely stunning chamber. Uh, as I was walking through it, you know, I just couldn't believe the colors, the patterns, the shapes. Uh, there were just layers upon layers of volcanic ash strewn throughout this thousand year old ice and these kind of swirling patterns that, that actually look like the northern lights. Um, nature was mimicking itself and it was, it was this kind of ice cave that I'd wanted to see on all of my previous trips to Iceland, but I, I just never had the chance. So this was really, uh, for me, a, a, an incredible sight to behold. I can remember looking at the droplets of water falling from the ceiling of this ice cave and thinking to myself that, you know, these, these droplets of water formed uh, a part of this glacier over a thousand years ago. So to see them melting like that was a kind of a profound moment for me because it, it gave me a first-hand understanding of, of just how quickly our global climate is changing. When photographing this cave, I, I tried to get my camera as low to the ground as I could with an ultra-wide lens, and it really helped to kind of capture a sense of scale of these caverns. Uh, I also positioned my camera underneath um, swirling patterns of, of ash, and also where the ice was quite thin, so there was a lot of light coming through. Hours passed inside of the cave, uh, as did my fear of getting crushed by ice, but uh, there were just limitless opportunities for shots. Anywhere you point the camera, you're gonna get something beautiful and unique. I could have spent days in there, but uh, again, we were losing light quickly, so we had to make our way out. About 300 meters north is a place called the Yokel Sarlon Lagoon, and the calving ice from the glacier uh, breaks off into this lagoon, and uh, these hundreds of icebergs all then float out to the ocean. And it's interesting because it's suspected that the iceberg that sunk the Titanic actually originated from this lagoon. These floating masses of ice can actually be quite difficult to photograph. They move at a very slow pace, and so it makes any kind of long exposure really difficult. Uh, but there are always you know, unique textures and patterns that you can kind of pick out uh, on fast shutter speeds. Um, of course, I'm always looking for any opportunity to use the drone. Um, so by sending the drone up and getting it out over the ice, we were able to get unique perspectives that you wouldn't otherwise be able to get. At this point in our journey, uh, we'd gone as far east as time allowed us. As well, we felt like we'd captured everything that we set out to, to photograph on this trip. So we headed back towards Reykjavik, and one of the wonderful things about Iceland is that there are natural hot springs everywhere. And what better way to wrap it all up than to sit and soak in a natural Icelandic hot spring, middle of nowhere, no entry fees, no tourists. Uh, it was just perfect. On this trip, I was thankful to have had the chance to photograph two things that I'd never had the opportunity to photograph in Iceland before, ice caves and the northern lights. And yet, despite that, there's just so much more to Iceland that keeps that country at the top of my go-to list for places to travel in the world. The exceptionally friendly, hospitable people, the wild and diverse landscapes, the incredible geography and geology, the contrast, it's really just a photographer's paradise, and I absolutely cannot wait to get back there again.